People, welcome back to Yard and Abroad TV. Please remember to hit the subscribe button, turn on post notification, like, comment, share, and subscribe. As I said, if you're not familiar with this channel, we talk about issues in Jamaica, the Caribbean, and the whole world, people. Wagwan people, Wagwan, thank you once again for tuning into my channel, Big Up In Yourself people. Please remember to hit the subscribe button. So yo people, today Mark Golden was sworn in as opposition leader at King's House people. And Lisa Hannah vowed that she will be behind Mark Golden in whatever he does. You see me I say? So I say Kingston, Jamaica. Newly elected president of the People's National Party, Mark Golden, has been sworn in. Governor General Sir Patrick Allen presented the opposition leader with the instrument of appointment at King's House a short while ago. That was earlier to the people. Golden, the member of parliament for St. Andrew Southern, was elected the sixth president of the PNP on Saturday, defeating member of parliament for St. and Southeastern Lisa Hanna by 296 votes. He takes over from former president Dr. Peter Phillips, who announced he was stepping down on September 4th following the party's crushing defeat in the general election during the swearing-in ceremony golden said i am grateful to all those who had the trust and confidence in me to provide this opportunity to serve my country jamaica in his new role and guess what people so lisa hannah them said was supposed to be at the swearing-in ceremony and she wasn't she called in sick it goes on to say Lisa Hanna will miss this morning swearing in of the People's National Party President Mark Golden due to illness. In a statement today, Lisa Hanna revealed that she was ordered by her doctors to stay home for the next four days due to severe chest cold and sinus complication. Hanna said that on receiving the invitation, she called the incoming party leader to inform him and to extend her best wishes. <laughs> people, people, people. I don't know. That sound like um, something or something, people. Eh? I got read in some of the comments that was left under the post on Tropics, people. This, this, one of my friends that I went to high school commented, Get well soon. Bad mind is definitely an illness people let me know if it was bad mind or or what cause janu all of a sudden she had run up and down everywhere promote and I do all sort of things and boom the morning of the swearing in ceremony she said um she can't make it she's sick somebody said sure wink wink another person said if your heart was wash off was a person somebody else goes on to say i'm getting donald trump vibes from lisa another person said lisa sick and tired a pnp another person goes on to say me would have sick and tired too another person goes on to say give her some ginger tea there then i what she do take the losses to heart another person goes on to say she bitter them not glad for others me feel say trump would have do something like this but people, let me know in the comment section what you think. You think a bad mind, you think she really sick. Let me know. Because as I said, she was um in the streets a promote and a do all sorts of things. And boom, a little cold congestion could have. Uh, how long was the ceremony this morning? I don't think it was three, four hours good. You could have go there and show your face and left. Me know. Let me know in the comment section what you think about these people. You think this was on purpose? You think say, she a feel a way that she didn't win? Let me know, people. Drop some comments. Excellency, Sir Patrick Allen, Governor General of Jamaica, my political family, my constituency representatives from South St. Andrew, members of parliament, and my dedicated campaign team, my wife, Sandra, and my three children, members of the media. Good morning. Usually, ceremonies such as this would have a larger number of our supporters and well-wishers, but we are in the middle of a global pandemic. 
and that is not possible at this time. I want to thank everyone who, with very short notice, made the effort to be here today, and I want to particularly thank Your Excellency for making the time for this ceremony and for hosting us this morning. I am grateful to all who had the trust and confidence in me to provide this opportunity to serve my beloved country, Jamaica, in this new role. It was with a great sense of humility that I received this instrument of appointment as leader of the opposition. In Parliament, we must uphold our oath to defend the Constitution of Jamaica and always protect the interests of the Jamaican people. The opposition provides a critical check and balance to the use of state power by the government. Nevertheless, we will not oppose for its own sake, but always with the objective of strengthening good governance and accountability in the affairs of the nation. We will seek to be constructive in our words and deeds and be fearless and unrelenting in the face of corruption or maladministration wherever it arises. I assume this office at a time when our country is facing unprecedented hardships. The COVID pandemic has already cost over 220 lives in Jamaica, most of them in the past two months, and has resulted in a sharp slowdown in the economy. Jamaica is now in a deep recession and unemployment has spiked by over 50% this year. In the face of this national crisis, we must embrace bipartisanship wherever it is in the best interest of the Jamaican people to do so. The heavy rains of the past two weeks have caused further massive de devastation to many parts of the island and the rural economy, with farmers bearing the brunt of the losses and the country's road infrastructure taking an awful beating. Some communities are cut off as we speak, and it is especially hard on the poor and the vulnerable at this time. Some families have even lost their homes. I use this opportunity to call for swift assistance to those most in need. The government must move quickly to clear blocked roads and remedy breakaways that have cut off important means of access to communities. It is also vital that any blocked drains and gullies be cleared quickly as more rain is forecasted as likely in the coming days. I appeal for persons who own heavy equipment to demonstrate the true Jamaican spirit of love and care for each other to help in the effort to clear roads and drains and gullies. Indeed, for all of us, this is a time to reach out to those in need and lay a helping hand to raise them up where they may be in need of assistance. Now, more than ever, our nation needs a strong and responsible opposition. Though our numbers in Parliament are relatively small, we little but we talawa. We must be cohesive, prepared, and strategic as we stand up for the Jamaican people and perform our parliamentary duties. We must reach out to civil society and the wider public for support where important issues of principle are at stake and the government is going down the wrong path. Amidst the hardships and crisis now afflicting the nation, the opposition must present a beacon of hope to lift the spirits of the Jamaican people. We must ready ourselves to provide an alternative to the country for when the wind of change catches the nation's sails. I humbly and gratefully commit to serving as leader of opposition effectively and resolutely with my opposition members of parliament and supported by our members in the Senate. Jamaica needs a robust and effective opposition at this time and as a new opposition leader, it will be done. I close by once again thanking the Governor General for hosting this ceremony at King's House. I look forward to a constructive relationship with His Excellency, which has already started, in the best interest of the nation as we move forward.
Thank you, and God bless Jamaica, land we love. Thank you, Mr. Golden. Ladies and gentlemen, we have come to the end of the proceedings. I want to wish you all a safe journey onwards and encourage you all to stay safe during COVID. Thank you. Thank you.